Hi, you've seen my uh, KRK Rokit or Rocket um, 6 powered studio monitor speakers that I used for my uh, video editing before. I've done a repair video on these which was really fascinating which I'll link in down at the end or down below. But there's one interesting thing, not, with, not just specific to these KRK monitors but most studio monitors on the market regardless of the brand, doesn't matter whether they're KRK, they're Yamaha, they're JBL, they're Alesis, you know, Mackie, any of the top brands they will have a noise floor to them, these powered monitors that have the amplifiers uh, built in. If you don't apply any signal to them whatsoever and you actually put your ear up to the tweeter like this and the woofer uh, to some uh, respect as well, but it's more uh, pronounced on the tweeter, you can actually hear a low level hiss on there. And it's got nothing to do with system interconnections or anything else. It's got nothing to do with the fact that I've uh, repaired these or the black existing black gunk or anything like that. It's basically inherent in most studio monitors. There are reported to be some that don't have any audible uh, background noise floor hiss on them, but I, I think they're, you know, reasonably rare. So it's as common as mud for these things to have them. And I thought, i just investigate why that's the case. First of all though, I'll get my mic and I'll actually put it uh, right up to it and I'll get, see if I can actually record the noise floor for you. Okay, let's see if we can actually uh, do some simple analysis of, or at least look at the FFT uh, response of our uh, audio captures here that we got from the woofer and the tweeter. Now this is the woofer file here. This point in here is uh, just the background noise when I had it switched off. So from here to here is the power up mute function. It lasts for about a half a second, second or something like that. And then this is the woofer noise in here. And we can see the spectrum down the bottom here. Now I'm using um, NCH WavePad here, Australian software. I don't know why they don't um, annotate these axes on here. So anyway, it's frequency, and we can see the frequency on the cursor. You can see it here. Note this uh, peak at around 100 hertz. This is what we're uh, interested in with the woofer. See how it's, right, they're, they're in mute mode. There was a hundred, a significant, uh, quite louder 100 hertz uh, peak there. Now we're listening to the woofer. You can see that the spectrum here is actually quite broadband compared to the bass room noise. So this is just picking up from the microphone, and then that is the inherent noise floor of the uh, woofer and the low frequency uh, amplifier in there. So you can see, you know, there's not a huge amount of difference in there. Once again, you have to put your ear right up to almost touching the cone to hear this. But you'll notice that there is that 100 hertz peak there. So of course, 100 hertz, we have 50 hertz mains here in Australia. So the 100 hertz is the full wave bridge rectified uh, frequency of this thing, so that's obviously coming through the 100 hertz ripple on the power supply, so that's coming through. So that's not great system design, is it? They could have, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> put some extra measures in place to uh, filter that out, but they didn't. But as I said, it's very low level, so it's not really a problem, but it's just, you know, it's there, and you can technically hear it. Everything else is like fairly broadband uh, noise, as you'd expect. So the tweeter, this is the switch on point here, this is the uh, mute period, and this is the noise. As you can see, it's quite high, and you can see that it is fairly broadband right across the uh, spectrum there, as you'd expect. So this is the background, this is when it's switched off, so this is the background room noise, and then that is the signal level. You can see it's much higher than we saw before on the woofer. So it is quite significant. You can see some roll off there at uh, what, 15 odd kilohertz there. So I don't know whether or not that's a measurement mic or you know the speaker rolling off. You get fairly consistent broadband noise across the band there. And that's what you expect from a uh, typical component thermal noise and resistor thermal noise and all the rest. You expect a broadband response and that's what we get. We get no 100 hertz uh, there at all because it's a um, high pass filter so it filters out you know anything below I think crossovers like 2.8 kilohertz or something like that so you wouldn't have expected that to come through and it doesn't so there you go just an interesting look at the uh, spectrum response of this room noise tweeter hmm
And this noise has absolutely nothing to do with the uh, the volume or you know high frequency adjust or anything like that. Makes no difference whether you turn that volume all the way down. It's an inherent system noise flaw, um, and that just manifests itself with the uh, wide dynamic range uh, speakers and the gain of the amplifier. But where is that noise coming from? That's what I'm interested in. And the other thing you've got to remember is that this noise, although you heard it uh, like it sounded really bad there, it is barely audible. You've got to put your ear practically right up to the tweeter or the woofer in order to actually uh, hear it. So, you know, maybe in a dead silent room you can hear it at a little bit of a distance. And some monitors are worse than the studio monitors are worse than others in this aspect. You can sort of, you know, hear the background hiss from further away. But it's really not an issue because when you uh, play your music or your audio whatever it is you're uh, mixing on your studio monitors then it's you know so far in excess of this noise floor that it's not a problem you just don't hear it it's literally down in the noise floor now if we have a look inside, we've got our main power amplifier board down here which main, has our main uh, power amplifier chip in it uh, for both, there's a separate one for both the uh, high frequency and the low frequency driver, it uh, separates them and it does that over on this board here which is the um, input board which has Japan Radio Corp uh, 4580 um, op amps on their classic audio amplifier chip. You know, they're quite low noise, they're low distortion, everything else, but we don't know. Is the noise coming from these? Is it coming from the power amplifier chips? Is it a combination of both? Um, it is inherent system noise flaw. No, it's got nothing to do with uh, that these boards aren't shielded or anything else, you know, like in terms of uh, can shielding. It's got the metal uh, plate on the back, but, you know, it's got nothing to do with that. It's inherent electrical noise flaw of the circuitry, but where does it come from? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, separate this uh, preamp and filter board from the audio amplifier. Now the audio amp and power amplifier has its own pull down resistor on the input. So if we disconnect the cable from the input, it should be fine. The uh, signal will be pulled down to signal ground and not a problem. So we, the first thing to do is just isolate whether or not noise is coming from here or whether it's inherent in the power amplifier on the backboard. Okay, so I've got it disconnected here. It's powered on. Can't hear a thing. Aha! What I'm doing now is I've taken the front panel off. I've connected my voltmeter across, AC voltmeter across the uh, 4 ohm tweeter here. And let's have a look. We're getting about, uh, this has like a normal, like 100 uh, kilohertz plus uh, bandwidth. So it's more than capable of getting uh, the average AC noise level. Now, if we switch it off, just to show you that we actually get nothing there, just a little bit of residual boop. There we go. So we switch it on and oh, it goes through. It's got an auto mute thing uh, for a couple of seconds before it turns on. There you go. You know, 245 microvolts um, AC or thereabouts as well. But let's try the high frequency adjust here. It's dropping. Look at that, it is going down. So that does show that uh, this is of course um, on the input um, uh, filter side of it. So here's the uh, schematic for that. You can see where that is. So it looks like the noise is coming from that front end with the um, uh, Japan Radio Corp bar 4580 op amps. If we actually uh, disconnect the front end like that, hardly anything at all there uh, so yeah but it, it's certainly not at the same level we were getting before that's interesting and we can see that the volume control here does have a little bit of effect so <laughs> we're talking like you know five or six microvolts here of extra uh noise but uh so if we knock the uh high frequency adjust right down and the volume right down we can go down to 220 odd but yeah, like, it, we can still hear it. Anyway, as you can see on the uh, schematic, we've got uh, U1 here, which is the input uh, balanced and unbalanced uh, amplifier, and then it goes into the uh, control pot VR1 here, which is the, uh, the back panel uh, volume control, and then that uh, branches off into the 
uh, low pass uh, amplifier, the low frequency amplifier, and the high frequency amplifier, part of which, half of which, is in uh, U2 here. So we know the volume pot has some factor um, into the noise. We know that the uh, high frequency gain adjust here um, uh, has some uh, impact on the noise and things like that. So yeah, well, we need to start isolating the amplifier. But what's interesting here is the type of op amp too. You notice that it's the uh, JRC 4580D and that D on the end actually matters because you can buy this chip in two different classes. If you have a look at the data sheet you can see that the not the standard non-D part is actually only specifies a typical uh, noise floor figure of uh, 0.8 microvolts and we won't worry about the conditions under which that's under but you can see below that that the uh, D part doesn't specify a typical but it actually specifies a maximum of 1.4 micro microvolts uh, equivalent system noise floor. So there you go. So they are actually using the higher quality part in here which has a guaranteed noise floor. Nice. Now this is where you might have to start getting into resistor noise as well. You know, you've got to take this into account. So let's take the uh, RH10 uh, there, which is a 20K resistor. A 20K resistor at uh, on, over a bandwidth of uh, 20 kilohertz has an inherent thermal noise of 2 microvolts, you know, which is naff all, but... When you're dicking around with this sort of stuff, you might have to take that into account, but let's go, meh, you know, the resistors aren't the problem here. If you're curious to know what I'm getting between the two uh, ground points, RH10 over here and um, R29 uh, over here, eh, 50 microvolts. And that does actually go away if I switch it off. But relatively speaking, across um, RH10 there, which is the one including the ground reference here, that goes over the cable to the uh, power amplifier, then that's our noise floor going into the power amp. And yeah, that would almost explain it, because the power amp has a gain as well. Okay, what I've done is actually lifted RH9 in there, so that the signal's actually decoupled from all the input amplifier and everything else. And look at this, it's much higher. To, uh, that's referred back over the cable to the basically the input of the power amplifier so we've disabled well there's a there's a resistor on here we're measuring across the resistor but that's about it it's it's disconnected from the rest of the circuit and yeah look i can feed in noise there you go feeding crap just by touching that and if you're curious to know do we get still get the noise well i can hear it from here but here's the problem with uh audio system design like this but we don't have a wire flapping around in the breeze Kind of, not the input wire, because we've still got that 20k resistor that we're measuring across on that board. I can hear it all from here. The hum is really actually quite loud, but if I actually disconnect this, the hum is gone. You'll have to trust me, it's now not loud, but the hiss is still there. So, it's nothing to do with the input uh, amplifiers there at all. Nothing to do with the balanced input amps, nothing to do with that uh, high pass uh, stage and all that sort of stuff. It's still there. It's coming from that cable or the power amp. Finally isolated it. So hopefully you can see the almost futility in trying to uh, track down system stage noise with a multimeter like this and these big antenna leads. We, we got some useful uh, information back when over on like R29 uh, over here, was it, where, but it's like low impedance. So when you got probing those low impedance stuff, all the crap you're picking up from your test leads and everything else isn't going to matter a rat's. But when we've got like just a 20K input resistor, which is the one over here that we're measuring, and we disconnected that, we've got a relatively high impedance now, and when you start having these big antenna cables flapping around in the breeze, just picking up all sorts of whatnot crap, it just introduces more noise than you're actually trying to measure. But of course, you know, we were just mucking around trying to met trace some uh, system noise voltages there. We didn't have to do that. We could have easily come to this conclusion without a multimeter at all. We could have just gone to the schematic and gone, well, let's just disconnect uh, RH9 there 
which disconnects basically all of the internal circuitry but leaves the cable in place going over. Bingo, we've still got effectively the same uh, noise. We can hear it in the tweeter. So therefore, it's none of the input circuitry here. So if we went and, you know, if we were an audio fool and went in and started changing all our op amps to some super whiz bang thing, wouldn't have made a rat's ass difference. And let's go over to the main power amplifier board and instead of uh, disconnecting the cable over here which affects the uh, mute and everything, what I've done is uh, desoldered one end of uh, CH100 which is the main input uh, AC coupling cap for the thing. So really now this power amplifier is not connected to that input uh, cable at all. It's only got its own internal uh, resistors caps and traces and everything else. Switch it on, it's still there. Might even say it's a little bit lower. Uh, tongue at the right angle. Yeah, but it's still there. And you kind of uh, expect that in theory, of course, because those all those op amps on the input uh, uh, preamp and filter stages, the NJM uh, 4580s, they're really no low noise. And they've even specified the particular part for that. But if you have a look at the power amplifier used in the uh, tweeter amp high pass high frequency amplifier here, you notice its input referred noise is only a couple of microvolts as well. But if we have a look at the schematic here and look at the uh, feedback resistor 12k and the uh, input resistor 460 odd ohms or whatever, it's got a gain of about 26. So any input referred noise is going to get multiplied by that gain. Once again, if you look at the data sheet in that input re uh, referred noise figure, then it's only a couple of microvolts. And you multiply that by the 26 gain, that doesn't get the output noise that we actually measured across the 4 ohm speaker. But if you look at the maximum figure, it could be as high as 10 microvolts. And in that particular case, yeah, multiply that by 26, that's almost the exact figure that we were seeing. So are we seeing just the uh, worst case um, amplifier noise here? I don't think so because and that'd be like this is inherent across all the speakers it's not just this oddball uh, one that I've got here so it's you know we're going to get our typical figures there so that noise there must be some extra noise being introduced somewhere in the power amp but there's something interesting here we didn't hear it when we disconnected the input cable which I believe puts it into mute mode and sure enough when I power this thing up there is no noise at all, no, really no audible noise, maybe the tiniest little half a bee's dick of noise. But if you have a look at the uh, schematic which shows how the mute system actually works, it's just switching between a different input um, which either goes to ground via a 22k resistor or goes via the input, that capacitor that we uh, disconnected up here and a uh, parallel 10k resistor. So the thermal noise of a 10k resistor around about, you know, just under two microvolts or thereabouts over the bandwidth that we're talking about. So really, it can't be that. Uh, plus the fact that uh, the in mute mode, you're going across a 22k resistor, which is more than double. So yeah, it's not that. I still think maybe it's a, you know, a small contribution, but I think the noise is coming from somewhere else. It's got to be like system related, layout, ground, everything else. So what I've done is actually, just for kick, shorted out RH100 here, which is that uh, 10K input resistor. And nope, just tested it, noise is still there. It ain't that. And even if you disconnect that input trace, which is what then uh, takes the trace all the way up to the top, to the uh, cap, which we've taken out up here, then um, it's still there. So it's all happening down around that power amp. If you have a look at the power amp here, this is uh, the trace that comes down from the input, that AC coupling cap, jumps over this, uh, goes over this jumper here, goes across, there's our uh, 10k down to ground, and there's a uh, parallel uh, cap as well, and that just goes into pin 7 of our amp there, so it doesn't get any simpler than that. So our, our power amplifier is now simply terminated with a 10k resistor. And a cap there. That's it. Yet, it still generates the hum. So, yeah, we've isolated it down to just the amp. And if you might think it's, you know, something to do with the mute path, well, the pin 5 is the mute input there, and there's the resistor. You're jumping straight over to the same 
ground there, so no problems whatsoever. It's not sneaking in there. And even if I disconnect RH106 here, which goes off to the mute function via the uh, diode off to the input, and I ground that so I'm actually uh, uh, disabling the mute function altogether and always having it in play mode, I still get the noise. When, when this amplifier goes into mute mode, it actually mutes the output properly, even though it's just switching the input according to the schematic. Aha, check this out. It's different to the uh, schematic. The schematic just shows that the uh, mute function just switches between the inputs here, right, and doesn't disable the output power amp. So that's why I was uh, getting, uh, you know, noise when I selected the pin 7 here when you select the non-mute function, the just the regular play mode, and you disconnect the capacitor here, you disconnect all the traces, you've only got a 10k going to ground, and we get the noise, we get the hiss. But then you select mute mode, pin 5 here, um, and you don't get it, which has the exact same, well, it's got to double the amount of resistance going to ground. But if you actually go look at the actual internal schematic, aha! There it is. You can see that the mute standby switch here goes through into these two comparators here, and these are the voltage threshold uh, limits. So anything below 1.8 volts, it actually uh, uh, switches into shutdown. It, here's the output amplifier block, and it shows a, it going into there and disabling the output amplifier. So that's why there is no noise. It's completely silent when you put it in standby mode. So that explains that, why it's silent in mute mode. And But anyway, it looks like all the noise is coming from the power amp itself. Because it, as I said, if I disconnect CH100 there and all the traces go into it, even if I disconnect the mute, you know, I thought maybe there's some, you know, crosstalk between the mute pin and noise coupling over or, you know, some weird thing like that. So removed RH106 here we still get the noise with just this 10k input resistor here. What do you do? I mean, it's only got a couple of microvolts uh, noise, a couple of microvolts for the chip. It doesn't really add up to uh, what we're measuring. It's inherent in that. I don't know, is there any pin compatible one you could whack in that's uh, inherently no lower noise, but it's already pretty low noise. But with the thing, the massive high dynamic range of this uh, tweeter, even a camera 100 microvolts of noise is audible. You can hear it. You know, it's down in the microwatts region or whatever, but uh, you know, it's like 80 dB down on one watt, but you can still hear it. And they actually uh, designed the preamplifier input with uh, spec to those low noise um, op amps, so it didn't really contribute um, much, if anything, to that uh, system noise level, which is quite nice. Couldn't really hear the difference when I like disconnected the input uh, amp. So those um, 4580 op amps really aren't contributing um, pretty much anything at all to that. So there you go. Fascinating. We narrowed it down. Inherent in the amplifier. Anyway, hope you found it interesting. If you did, Give it a thumbs up, and as always, you can discuss down below or on the EV blog forum. Catch you next time.